Welcome to the Michigan Travel Show, a kaleidoscope of stories about the people, places, and events that shape our great state. We have found a wonderful place in Dowagiac, Michigan. It's the museum at Southwestern Michigan College. And with us is the museum director, Stephen Arsenault. Stephen, tell us about some of the most amazing things we're seeing here. Uh, I'm finding out things I never knew, like who Ivan Kinchelo was. Can you tell us a little bit about him? Well, uh, Ivan Kinchelo is one of our local heroes. He was a uh, he was a test pilot during the 1950s. I like to say that he would have been John Glenn if he uh, hadn't been if he hadn't perished in a uh, plane crash back in 1958. He would have been the first man in space. Uh, we're blessed here to have a great collection of his stuff donated to us by his family back in the 1970s. Well, it's a really fascinating story because he's he really flew to the edge of space before anybody else. California takes aboard Captain Ivan Kinchelow for an attempt to establish a new altitude. He was con kind of considered the first spaceman. The first man to achieve weightlessness, and he was a national celebrity after his uh, historic flight in 1956. Well, so many things here are really a, a, a slice of history of Cass County, Dwajiak, and Cassopolis. Um, and one of the other things that's quite different from flying is the fishing lures. And they're just fascinating. They're all so different. Tell us about those. Uh, the fishing lures, uh, James Hedden back in the 1890s, the legend says that he was out on the mill pond whittling, waiting for a friend on the pond, and he threw, a, threw, a, threw the piece of whittled wood out, and uh, he saw a bass hit it immediately, uh, had, the, had an idea for a new product, and it took off, and it was one of the biggest bait companies in America. Well, I can see why. If you like fishing, I'm, each lure has a name. There's one like uh, called the, the meadow mouse, and um, they they actually look like little mice, or they look like fish, and they they're they're mobile, almost like puppets. They are exactly like puppets, sort of. And we have an interactive in our gallery where people can try and be the puppeteer for a while and see how they can move those those lures across the water. Well, if I were a fish, I'd be jumping. <laughs> <laughs> Many did, and they did. And then there are all these great stoves, wood-burning stoves. They're called a round oak stove. And one of them is so elaborate, I can't imagine. You'd have to have it in your living room. Uh, they were parlor stoves. Uh, they were the they were the working man's heaters. Uh, there were a lot of companies that made more beautiful decorative stoves, but the round oak was the every, every man's stove. And uh, they are collected nationwide. In fact, I've even had worldwide uh, inquiries for research from people from New Zealand. Uh, so these things are collected around the, around the world, and they, we've got a fine collection here. Well, it's a huge collection. There's so many I can see right in front of me, and they're all different, and they're all round. So I guess that's one of the features. Yes, the uh, the round oak. They 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 were came in different sizes. Depending on the size, they could uh, hold a different size piece of round wood. So a 24 inch stove could hold a 24 inch piece of round wood. Ooh, probably don't have too many of those anymore. Oak, presumably. <laughs> of course, for a round oak stove, why not? And. I also like the story of the famous journalist, and especially the rope ladder that kids and maybe even grown-ups could climb. I've climbed it a couple times. We've uh, we, we've got a uh, the uh, SS Webb Miller was named after uh, uh, Webb Miller, who was born and uh, raised in Pokeg and went to Dwajak High School. Uh, he uh, he was the journalist of the 1920s and 1930s, and we got a wonderful collection of uh, items from him and his. Uh, or from his family regarding his life. Uh, and it, during World War II, there was uh, the SS Webb Miller, and we've recreated sort of a portion of it to uh, for visitors to climb up and down. And then we also, to go along with that, we have a, a treasured object in, uh, from the collection, and it's the uh, uh, United States flag that flew on the SS Webb Miller on D-Day. And it uh, was a troop transport on D-Day, so it's a real special item in our collection. And that flag looks like it's been through a war. It, it, it definitely does. It, uh, it, it, it saw some hard days. Well, there's, these are just a few examples. In fact, the train itself is fascinating because it makes you think of Dwajiak Bay back in either 1870 or 1920. <laughs>
I really have a lot more things I want to go see. So thank you, Stephen, for talking with us. We appreciate it. You're welcome. Thank you for coming.